Hey guys, welcome back to Ian Griffin Studio. Check it, I made a pond. And it looks awesome. So I'm gonna show you guys how I made it. That's pretty much it. This is a uh, kind of, a, not necessarily D&D &D related. Um, it's maybe a little bit more related to Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigma or other gridless battlefields. Um, of course you can have a gridless D&D &D encounter, there's no problem with that, but this should hopefully give me a chance to showcase a few different techniques um, that should be maybe useful to someone, hopefully. So let's make a pond. Right, so this stuff is called Formex or Expanded PVC and it is brilliant. It is strong and durable and it won't warp. It can also be carved with a with a knife. Uh, I mean, this stuff, it, it just fills all the criteria for perfect basing material. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, form, just scrap form that I found lying around and I'm just gonna add that with um, hot glue gun to the edges to create a bit of a lip. Uh, to kind of contain the water when it has to be added later on. So just hook it all down until you're happy. Try not to leave any gaps around the edges. All right, now I decided I want to put a little bit of a rocky outcrop on this uh, pond, so I'm going to use some plaster of Paris. And this technique is really quite cheap and easy, and you should get a really good result out of it. The whole idea here is that we take plaster of Paris, um, we pour it into a mold and we let that set and the mold should hopefully create a really good rock-like texture. All right, now what we're gonna to use to mold it is some tin foil. Everyone's got this, it's pretty cheap and easy to come by. And all we're gonna do is crumple it up into a ball a pretty, a pretty sort of tight mashup of, of shapes you want there. In that you want uh, a lot of creases and and uh, texture involved. So turn up the, the lip around the edge just so that you don't get any spillage. And then once you've got that done I think I'm going to use an extra an extra piece because I had a little bit of a tear in that. It's quite difficult to get the whole thing uh, unfurled again once you've crumpled it up because it is a little bit brittle to, to touch so I'm going to put an extra piece underneath just to secure it there you go and then I'm going to pour in the plaster of Paris mixture cover the base of the whole thing you really want a fairly thin layer doesn't really want to be any more than about I would say maybe three or four mil thick just wants to be enough to cover the bottom and um, cover all of the, the texture in the bottom of the tin foil. And you can put that to one side and let it set for a while, a few hours should do it. And then carefully peel off the tin foil, try and get it off in pretty big chunks if you can. There will always be little bits that get left behind like this, so you might want to pick them out with a knife. And then, once you've got this shape, you can start to uh, break it apart and use it as smaller rock chunks. But you can see the texture is, is quite interesting on there. That should work really well as a rock texture. So once you've broke that apart, maybe use a hammer or something, or, or just use your hands, it is quite brittle stuff. Then you can use it in the next stage. And here we've got the little tub, little tray full, if you like, of these smaller chunks, which I can use as rocks. So I'm going to create a little part on top of this form corner piece here, where the water is going to originate from. So I need to dig that bit out pretty soon, and then that's going to be where my little waterfall is going to come from into this pond. So I'm just using hot glue here to cement down some of these pieces of, of plaster of Paris. I'm just going to cover the entire rock, rocky outcrop, that, that raised area of form. I'm going to cover all the sides of that 
in in this plaster of Paris and maybe put a little rock in the middle of the pond and then once that's done we can move on to smoothing out the edge areas so this is just basic um, joint filler or joint compound or you know polyfiller sometimes it's called and it's really just a, a plaster based a ready to use out the tub kind of material and you can just kind of spread it around the edges it's probably a little bit easier to use your finger at this point because it's got a, a nice smooth edge on your finger so you can really help shape the the filler around the form into a nice uh, smooth kind of uh, wave <laughs> if you like uh, it's difficult to get the same finish with a with a stick all right so it's time to get some texture down now we're going to use PVA glue and we're going to smooth this around all around the edges over the lip and just on the inside of the pool where the water will be on top of the rocky outcrop everywhere where you want a little bit, little bit of dirt to show through and give a little bit of uh, interesting texture and once all that PVA glue is applied we can start with the sand I use a mixture of kind of coarse bits and mostly fine grain sand but just sprinkle it around everywhere where you put glue make sure it covers everything now you will notice that I'm doing this in a kind of a, a, a tray the, the tray is about um, A4 sized uh, just so I can keep all the, all the uh, sand contained and, and then reused once I can shake off the excess With all that priming done, we need to do the dirt. So we're going to use just a mixture of different browns, different shades of brown. Uh, really just work it in there to all that texture. And then anywhere that you need mud or kind of dirt, so just on the inside of, of the pool, all around the edges, probably on top of that rocky outcrop again. Uh, you can skip the rocky areas. They're going to be done in a, in a kind of a grey a bit later on. So just get the brown everywhere it needs to be and then we can move on to the rocks. You'll notice I'm leaving the middle of the pool area that are kind of a lot darker because I want to give the impression of depth. Um, but at the moment I'm going to go around the edges with some Zandri dust and highlight all the raised texture. And it's time to do some rocks so we're gonna hit these with some medium gray and just want to get that on all that rocky surface around the outcrop that I've made there on the small rock in the middle of the pool uh, the idea here is that it looks a bit light at the moment but when the wash goes on it will darken the whole thing down really nicely Right, and it's time for the wash so I'm using the same wash that I would use on all of my dungeon tiles uh, if you'd like to check out one of those videos for how I made that wash uh, and then it's it's basically it's just a brown black wash with a bit of water added to it but here I'm just gonna cover the all the rock in this wash it doesn't matter if I get a little bit on the on the dirt I try and avoid it as best I can uh, I've put a little bit in the middle of the pool there just to darken it down a tiny amount again. Yeah, I think a tree is needed. I'm going to put a tree in the corner somewhere and get rid of that base. Don't need that. 
pick a point where you want the tree to be. I'm going to choose here and I'm going to put a little hole in the plaster filler area with my knife, a little exacto blade there. Just a little hole should do it and then it should be enough to slot in the tree but I don't want to keep it in there just yet. I want to get a bit more work done on it before the tree goes in. So we're going to dry brush the rocks because they are looking a little bit brown at the moment because thanks to that wash. So a little bit of a dry brush over the top uh, should just help pick out those highlights again and make them a little bit greyer again if you like uh, while still leaving that great contrast in the detail. So once you get that done, move on to the next stage. I'm sure you by now you've noticed I've put a little uh, sword and a kind of skeletal uh, rib cage there in the in the pond. I decided this pond is going to look a little bit more sinister than originally intended so I'm going to leave the tree probably without foliage and I'm going to I've, I've added the sword and the and the skeletal remains there just to to kind of make it look a little bit uh, interesting and weird and maybe a little bit creepy. So I've rusted that sword up a little bit and I've shaded those bones in there and now I've just decided to add a little bit of foliage around the edges. I don't want to go crazy with this foliage, I just want it to be um, the occasional little bit of life around the edge. I don't want it to be too lush and green because of the theme of this piece, uh, trying to keep it sinister and maybe a little bit darker. Uh, so I'm going to go easy on the foliage hopefully and leave a lot of dirt showing through. So sticking down that model foliage was mostly done with tacky glue uh, but you can use any glue that really dries clear and is fairly kind of strong. Uh, you don't want this stuff to, to fall off you know, while you're gaming on it because it has to be fairly durable. The stuff that I'm putting down now, um, this glue is PVA and I'm going to add some static grass. So this is just I think it's called a burnt grass or dry grass or something. It's not very lush. I didn't want this piece to be to be too green. Um, I want to keep it kind of sort of dark and a bit miserable looking. And uh, so I'm just going to add this to a few different places. And then I'm going to add a different flock next. Alright, and the same thing again. A bit of PVA in little, little areas, little blotches. And then we're just going to add some dry grass, which is quite yellowy and a bit like a sort of hair and things. So I'm going to put that in different areas. It's good to mix up uh, different uh, grass tones and things just to kind of keep the piece looking fairly interesting. You'll notice I'm using a tray again just to uh, to catch all the excess. All right, now for the scary part. It's time to add some water effects. I'm using Woodland Scenics water effects here and uh, I'm adding a little bit of my black wash to it just to dim down the uh, the colour and add a bit of a bit of murkiness to the water and then the idea is just to slowly, very slowly and carefully, pour it into the pool. Alright so just a really nice slow steady pour just into that depression area in the middle of the piece and just try and work it into all those areas with a, a cocktail stick or a coffee stirrer or something everywhere that that water needs to be do be careful try not to overfill it uh, you don't want to use this in maybe like uh, several stages and several layers this product because uh, if it's too thick it won't dry very quickly and ideally you want it to dry and then add another layer later on and that should hopefully build up a nice deep water level for you. So we'll leave this dry overnight and then I'll come back to it the next day. Uh, 
Okay, there was a disaster when I poured the water effects. Um, it, it didn't go as planned. There was a leak in, and it kind of went all over my desk while I was asleep. Um, and, it, and then it dried and it stuck the pond to the desk. So, so I changed what I was going to do and I used a, a different, a two-part epoxy resin uh, by CFS. So that seemed to work really well. Uh, however, you can use water effects if you want several layers of it, um, but it just it wasted a lot of time and I had to change tack so yeah I went with a different resin and it is expensive but you can do it with just uh, the normal water effects disclaimer all that <clears throat> all right so with my disaster um, I'm going to show you what happened instead what I, what I did instead of using water effects I'm going to use some clear epoxy resin I've been meaning to get some of this stuff for a while so I went out and got some and it's, you mix it in equal volumes um, into a separate cup, part A and part B, and then you can mix that together with a little bit of paint or acrylic or something, and then you can pour it on as normal. You can see the residue left behind by the water effects there, nice and shiny. Uh, hopefully this stuff will be a little bit, it's, I mean, it's a lot thicker, that's for sure, and it doesn't, it won't leak so easily. But I am assured that it's crystal clear once it's dry, which is great, and it should dry in in one pour, um, and it should be it shouldn't evaporate or anything like that. You can see how uh, how how it doesn't flow very well. It's quite viscous, and so you just you need to tease it all the way up to the edges of where you need to, to go, just to make sure it really gets there. Because I I don't think it would flow all the way to the edges. On its own, and I'm just teasing it up the the waterfall area there. You can see, and uh, there you go. Next is just to remove some bubbles in it. And to pop the bubbles, you need to use heat. So I'm going to use a lighter. For God's sake, be careful when you're doing this. If you are a child, seek adult supervision. Uh, basically you just want to blast the, the top of the, the surface there with, with a bit of heat and that should bring the bubbles to the surface and pop them uh, pretty much instantly. So you can see how they just disappear under the heat. Really useful. Now to add a little bit of surface ripples to, the, to this water because it's absolutely crystal clear at the moment, I'm going to add a bit of gloss Mod Podge. It has to be gloss. Do not use matte. You will spoil the effect of the of the water. So, with a bit of gloss in place, just smear it around, and then we can shape it with the brush, and we can shape it with a straw. We can blow some ripples into it. Now I'm using a straw. Some people like to use an airbrush. I do not have an airbrush, so I'm going to use this as my low budget method. You know what it works really well so just shape it as best you can and let it dry All right, I like it. You know, it's uh, possibly one of my most favourite terrain pieces I've ever made. I think um, it took some doing, uh, even with a little bit of a mishap in the middle, but it was worth it in the end. I think, and all the little details came together, and it looks really cool. And it's, it's 
durable, you know, as well. Like, it's not going to go anywhere. It's, it hasn't warped at all. Like, it sits really flat. Um, definitely get your hands on some uh, Formex, if you can. Uh, expanded PVC, it's also called. Definitely get your hands on some of that if you can. It's really useful stuff, and um, it's it's almost the perfect, the, the perfect model making basing material. Uh, I can't think of anything better at the moment. I mean, MDF is decent, but it's not. It, it's hard to work with sometimes if you just got like a limited tools. But this stuff is it's great. Um, that's it for now. Uh, what else is there to say? That's that's all. I think uh, just please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff, and drop me a comment if you want me to do anything specific in future. I'll see what I can do, and uh, yeah, let me know if you like the kind of you know the 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 videos that aren't D and D. You know, videos that are more outdoorsy stuff or nature based things. Um, or let me know if you want me to paint minis. I'm not the best mini painter in the world <laughs> by a long way. But um, if you want me to paint miniatures and things like that, then let me know in the comments below and I will see what I can do. So, with that said, I will see you again next time. Happy crafting. Bye for now.